I will request Mr. ACR Das to come and give his talk. I think everybody in this hall knows Mr. ACR Das. He's a technical wizard. Many of the things which we see today, he is the author. Please give a big hand to Mr. ACR Das. Good afternoon to all of you. I am standing before you basically to say something about the steel quality control orders in which I have been actively associated during my tenures in the Ministry of Steel and hope I will give you some important information. And uh, before I say so, let me request Dr. Subha Gautam. He has told in the morning that we live in democracy, so I think I can have different opinion than what he has got in certain cases. My topic is role of quality control in steel and steel products. I think we, from the morning session, we have been talking about steel. I think it goes without saying, and you all are aware, what is the importance of steel? It is very, very versatile product, and it has got unique properties, and which makes it suitable for several applications, and hence it is a very material of choice for our economy, be it infrastructure, be it construction, be it engineering, be it automotive, or white goods, or shipbuilding, anything you name, we cannot get or find products without steel. Now, because of the very basic property or intrinsic property of steel and its performance, the steel consumption, production as well as consumption across the globe is increasing. And uh, as I think our, our minister has told, we are aiming, from, aiming to increase our steel production from present level of 106 million to, I think, 250 million ton, and capacity of 300 million ton by 2030-31. Now, question is, the steel has to meet the end-use requirements. The end-use requirements and the customers, they are the king. So we have to ensure that it still meets the customer's requirement and what is important in these are the standards. Now, going by the, into the definitions of the steel, and if you go into the steel definition, you will find the importance of quality. And it is very much dependent on the raw material as well as the technology associated to produce the steel. Besides the basic manufacturing process, the processing technologies, like for example, manufacture of TMT, apart from the basic chemistry, the processing or thermomechanical treatment is very important to get the desired quality in the steel. Also, a very important factor is the raw material. Raw materials definitely govern the quality of the product. And there are many examples in the country, for example, or manufacture of DRI, manufacture of uh, use of this DRI as an electrical furnace vis-a-vis -vis induction furnace. One process can produce quality still for the same input, whereas the other process cannot. And uh, now question is, we have been talking about the standards. Now as per the Indian standards, as per the uh, BIS, Standards are documented agreements. I think Mr. Maini has talked about how these standards are formulated. And these are basically technical specifications covering n number of parameters relating to the performance of the steel. And if we go into the ISO definition, it talks about the, that standards are established by consensus. This was also mentioned by Mr. Maini and approved by a registered body. And a very important parameter or the definition of a standard is that it is a consolidated result of science, technology, and the experience. 
Accordingly, there is a need to amend these standards or revise these standards from time to time to meet the current day's technology and current day's requirement. In fact, uh, many, there are misconceptions in the market or in the industry that standards are uh, standards are mandatory. It is not. Standards, by definition, are voluntary documents. Of course, they can be made mandatory by under some law. Now, what is the standard framework in Indian context? And Mr. Maini has already talked about the Bureau of Indian Standards. Of course, we have got other agencies. We have got other uh, standards, like for food, FSSI standards. I am not talking those here. Now, here in India, BIS formulates or establishes the standards. And how it is formulated, Mr. Maini has already clarified. And uh, BIS also recognizes foreign standards or any other standards and which are named as the Indian standard. And they also adopt the international standards and also the national standards, which is provided in the Act. In addition to the standards formulation activities, I think Mr. Prasad have talked in the morning, BIS also operates a stand product certification marks scheme. In fact, this is the basis of quality control order, which I'll come later. And basically, aim is to provide a third party assurance to the consumers. And here, the system is such that BIS allows the producers to mark the steel product with a standard mark of BIS, which is, of course, supervised from time to time by BIS. And like the adoption of Indian standard, which are not mandatory, this adoption of the product certification schemes of BIS is also not mandatory. But Article 16 of the current BIS Act of 2016 provides that if government wants, in public interest, the adoption of the standards and use of marking, BIS standard marking, can be made compulsory. Now, uh, I think uh, there is some, uh, I made a study sometime in 2015-16. At that time, BIS had published 140 product standards. I am not counting those standards, which are codes, which are definitions. So I am not counting those. I am talking about the product, steel products, basically iron steel products. And where there is a marking clause in this standard, because no standard can be put under quality certification scheme unless there is a marking clause. And in, these are the standards where there is a marking clause, means they can be brought under the product certification marks scheme. And 53 of these 140 standards have been brought under the quality certification marks scheme, mandatory scheme of, uh, by Ministry of Steel. And would, what really, it do, really means that the product has to meet these standards and also bear the standard mark of BIS, who, which we call commonly as the ISI mark. I am told these uh, 53 products in terms of volume of total consumption in this steel constitute about 80 to 85 percent. And in other words, this covers most of the non-alloy steel and stainless steel, and maybe certain alloy, special and niche products, which in quantity terms may not be much, but in number, in terms of the number of the standard, it is substantial. And I think Minister told that we have about, or Mr. Prasad told we have about 80 standards which are now con being considered for the quality control order. Now, these orders, once it is issued, is applicable or it is mandatory not only for the domestic producers, but also for the foreign manufacturers. Now, let me give a little bit of genesis. I, I, and and I, many people may not be knowing. This genesis of the quality control order goes to the two public notices of 1965 and 1971 issued by Ministry of Steel under the Essential Commodities Act, under which th uh, 33 steel products were notified 
basically these were a standard product with, to give some price preference. Now, taking this as the basis, and there was a time, sometime in 2000, 2001, there was a large scale import of CRGO second cent defective product, and reference was received from Ministry of Power to stop these imports. And uh, of course, as you know, such products import cannot be prohibited. So the suggestion came that we should go for the quality control order, which uh, WTO parlance we call it technical regulations. So that was the background when DGFT issued a notification in November 2000, covering these 33 products under the mandatory quality control order only for imports. Now, now this, this product, as you know, this was not uh, found uh, WTO friendly and it was removed. Later on, Ministry of Steel, Department of Consumer Affairs reissued this order and Ministry of Steel issued and added many more products. Now, legal provisions have already been told, but basically the, the order says the product must conform to the standards and substandard product sale distribution is prohibited and if it is substandard, this has to be scrapped. And for getting the BIS mark, you have to get a BIS license. And uh, uh, in the order also says who is the enforcement and certification agencies. It is the BIS. Now, there are two basic aims and objectives. If you see the underlying criteria in these standards, one is that it, may, it aims to make available quality steel to the consumers whether it is direct consumers or indirect consumers. But there are many products which goes directly, like TMT, to the consumers. There are products which goes through some other agencies to the end, end consumers. So this is one of the main, uh, I should say, objectives of the, of the quality control order. Another very added advantage of the quality control order is, is that consumers are empowered, or consumers are allowed to go to take legal course against any substandard supply. Now, there are many problems and issues. I think uh, Monica can supply these or uh, uh, these uh, my PPTs. OK, very good. So but one of the point I want to tell is very important. See, we have been talking about the procedure of pro formulation of the standards. But the procedure is, I, I find it is ill-conceived. Technically, yes. Practically, it does not happen. What is the constitution of this committee, technical committee in BIS? Technically, it consists of all experts from producer, user. But actually, you find lack of users presence in the standard, in the standard form of somebody. So this is a very big problem. And ultimately, what happens, products which are used by the users are not covered in the standards. And ultimately, the, uh, when the standard is published, when the quality control order is published, there's a lot of hue and cry, and they say this, cover, this product is not covered, that product is not covered. Now, there are many other issues re relating to the implementation of quality control in the secondary sector, and uh, particularly la lack of uh, testing facilities, and uh, even I'm told disposal of second, seconds in defective product is also a big issue. Even many renowned producers sell the second and defective order even today, in spite of the quality control order. And uh, of course, I think uh, this, uh, our, our uh, this, uh, advocate talks about something, the problems with the customs. People are suffering a lot in the customs. Because for anything and everything, normally I have found customs will refer the, say, sorry, whether it is imported, is electrical steel or hot degrees for automotive steel, they will say, go and go to BIS, get a letter from Ministry of Steel. Without that, will not issue the, will give the clearance. And that delays the process, and that pe people are forced to demurrage. I think this is a very, very important issue, and at the moment, people are suffering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.